Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today I'm jumping into the October Faith Art Box from Creative Retreat Kits. I will go ahead and link the unboxing for this kit down below for you guys so you can check that out. I'm going to apologize, I'm filming this the same day that I filmed my unboxing and you can hear I have no voice hardly. Um, I was at a women's retreat this weekend and there was lots of singing, lots of talking, lots and lots of crying and so my voice is gone so sorry about that. But um, I am journaling in Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 through 20 which is the focal passage for um the devotional content this month and i'm working in the new illustrating bible so i have these um, almost four inch wide margins to work with and so i'm going to use these stickers and stamps from the kit this month to kind of create a little title area up at the top here and i'm actually going to use about two thirds of <laughs> this uh area in the margin for some journaling. Now this is going to look a little bit different because this journaling and this passage are very personal to me. I'm usually very raw, raw, very vulnerable on my channel to a fault. Sometimes I get taken aside by people thinking I'm sharing too much on my channel, which I don't think I am. I think it's important to be honest with you guys, but, um, in this particular instance, it does involve, um, some other people that I just can't talk about on my channel. And so my journaling will be blurred out in the video as well as in my photos. So that's why that looks a little bit different. Um, and so, yeah, this is just a really hard devotional for me to work through. This series of passage is very personal to me um, from about a year ago, something we went through in our church. And so, um, like I said, we're working in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 and 20. And that says, if you're, and this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses if he refuses to listen to them tell it to the church and if he refuses to listen to even to the church let him be to you as a gentile and a tax collector truly i say to you whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven again i say to you if two of two of you agree on earth about anything they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven for where two or three are gathered in my name there i am i among them I mean, so this is such an important set of scriptures because Jesus is basically laying out point by point how we are to deal with um, our brothers and sisters in Christ when they sin against us. And so this series of passages is directly speaking to Christians. This does not apply to um, non-believers. Um, but we are going to encounter... Um, instances where a fellow brother or sister sins against us. And that could be something very small, and that can be something very big. Either way, Jesus has laid out exactly how we are to deal with that and how we are to seek restoration in that relationship. And God is a God of restoration, and ultimately that's what we're searching for in those relationships, no matter how small or big the sin is. Um, and so like I said, I did do, go through this about a year ago in our church, and we um, were guided by the elders to go through this process, um, you know, listed out here in this scripture. And so what it's saying is that you are to go by yourself to that person and address that sin. Say, hey, you sinned against me in this way, in a loving way, <laughs> have that conversation. And if they are, if they ask for forgiveness, if they repent of that sin, then your relationship is restored and you can go forward and live forward in that relationship. However, if they don't, ask for forgiveness and don't repent of that sin, then you go and gather two or three more people and go to that person. Same thing. If they don't repent, don't ask for forgiveness, then you go and bring it before the church and bring that person before the church. And so that is very hard. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know about you, but addressing somebody and telling them, what they did wrong against you is so much harder than sitting in the background and gossiping about it or talking behind their back, which is absolutely the wrong way to address that. Um, and it is it is difficult. But um, I know from experience in my marriage that God is the God of restoration and any relationship can be restored even through this, you know, especially through this process. Um, it's difficult, but it's such a simple process. And the thing is, we don't have to do it by ourselves. Through prayer, we can go to God and we have God and his strength next to us as we go through that process. And so um, I think it's just so important to exercise this in our day-to-day -day lives, and especially for the success of your local church. It's so important to restore those relationships rather than just the gossiping and the, and the and the talking about things behind people's backs and not just addressing it and moving forward. And so 
I really would encourage you to work through this devotional on your own and go through the scripture and and what that means for you and be very raw and vulnerable in your journaling. And maybe there is a a relationship that you need to um, address in this way and to seek restoration in this way. And so I just ask that you would just sit and spend some time with God and pray about that and ask for his strength um, and his courage to help you go through that process because it definitely can be very scary and very stressful. Let me tell you, the last two years of my life have been the most stressful, horrific <laughs> two years I think I've had in a very long time um, because it is, it's not fun to go through that process, but it is necessary. And, you know, here Jesus is instructing us, this is how it's to be done. So um, it was very hard for me. I sat down and stared at this page in this entry for probably 30 to 45 minutes before I even picked up the product because I just couldn't, in my mind, rectify using all of these super cute, fun products with such a heavy topic for me in my experience. Um, and, and trying to figure out how to film a video and bring it to you guys was very difficult because I want to share, but I know there's things I can't share. And I know even what I have shared is probably some people are going to think too much and I'm going to get called out on it. And it's just, it's just a very difficult thing, but, um, I think it's just so important. I think some of us didn't even know that Jesus gives us some of these instructions in the Bible. And so it's so important to study that and to know that. So you can see here, I used those vines and those leaves to create this fun little wreath up at the top and just quickly colored it in with some brush markers. And then now I'm taking a pen and a ruler and adding in my journaling lines. Um, this particular Bible does not have have lined margins so I go in and just add my own lines and I knew that I was going to want to leave myself plenty of space to journal out a prayer Um, and if it's really personal you could do this um, maybe as a tip-in or put it in an envelope something like that so from here on out that journaling will be um blurred out. So I did just go ahead and add in some more of the word Fetty stickers. Say down there together we are stronger. I do end up pulling some tile alphas from a past kit rather than using the ones from this month's kit just to pull in some more of that yellow. And at the top it says where two or more gather in his name. And then I just use a sprinkle of the hearts um, around the page just to kind of bring in some more of that color. Uh, I used all of the colors, the yellow, the light teal, the teal, the deep purple, and the light purple. I did not use that kind of rusty orange color. And that's a way to pull in colors without it being too overwhelming by not using all of the colors in the kit. You see, I didn't have an E, so I used an F, and then I just brought a blue pen in and just filled that in to make it an E. It's not perfect, but it works. And then I do go ahead and pull out this washi tape is from Creative Retreat Kits. You can find that over on their site. And I use that just to kind of reinforce the page underneath the tab and bring in some more of that black. And I do also go ahead and add a date stamp. So be sure to check out the description box for links to everything that was mentioned. Go check out the blog post for more um, close-up photos. Leave me any questions or comments down in the comments. Um, Let's have a conversation down there. If you don't feel comfortable leaving it as a... um, you know, public comment, you can always email me. My email address is down there. It's lindsaydecor at gmail.com. We can and converse through email. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.